a couple days ago and just now got a decent day where I can get out and do it. Uh, this home was supposedly built in the 20s. Uh, there's a barn behind it, but on the old maps, there does appear some other structures around here in a house. So I think this might have been um, an older property and then a newer house built on top of it, maybe in the 20s, but we're gonna see. So hopefully, uh, we're gonna stay here for a little while and see what we see what we come up with. But we'll see you on the first find. All right, guys, I've been at this for a while. Uh, I was up in the yard and there was nothing but a few pieces of clad some junk I think there might have been some topsoil added at some point because there's just no signals um, so I came down into the field here I only have permission to do a part of the field where he owns because he doesn't own the back half but uh, I got my first nice old coin it's gonna be a largey which I was kind of hoping for these you can see the one cent side is pretty good shape sorry it's probably it's not focusing on me here we go and I don't have a date on it yet but I'm hopeful that I should be able to get one once it dries off I'll lightly toothpick it and see but that's what we came for so uh, first large scent of the year this is only about the third or fourth one I ever found so that's pretty cool maybe the yeah fourth maybe but I did find one little piece of what I believe is a uh, colonial shoe buckle. And that was a couple of minutes ago, but I didn't film it. But I'm pretty sure that's what that is. That's the inside tongue area of a colonial shoe buckle. So there is some old stuff in here. Um, I want to try to get permission for the other side for the rest of the field and uh, see what happens. But... I'm gonna stay here a little bit. Like I said, I've been here over an hour, um, but I'm gonna cover this a little bit more, a little bit more thoroughly, and see if uh, we can't find another one. All right, see you on the next. All right, been a long time, <laughs> probably about another hour since I made that clip of the large scent that I found. But uh, I went around in that field, didn't find anything else but some junk. Um, but at least now I got a piece of silver finally. A little jumpy signal there was a little piece of iron in but it's gonna be a silver quarter looks like I whacked it right there it's just a Washington quarter and date wise you got 1934 so saved the day with some silver even though I whacked it <laughs> but uh all right I'm actually almost done here I'm just in this little side yard here and uh, picked up a little bit more clad but We'll take the silver. All right, hopefully there'll be more. We'll see you on the next. Hey guys, what's up? Out today for a new hunt. Um, actually at this house here, it is a uh, very early 1800s home. Uh, this was the old farmhouse. There's uh, some rock walls on the property. There's a barn in the back. I'm actually here uh, I was invited by a subscriber of mine, somebody that I met through my channel. So, um, I'll, uh, more about him later, but, uh, we're gonna do this front yard here and see what happens. I uh, got two wheat pennies so far, but, um, not sure how it's gonna be, but we'll give it a go. All right, see you on the first target. All right, guys, got my first piece of the silver of the day. It's gonna be a Washington quarter. It's like 1948 so that's a good start all right we're gonna continue here I've got those two wheat pennies and now this so we're gonna continue here and uh, see what else we find see you on the next all right guys I just dug that silver quarter five minutes ago as a matter of fact there's the plug for it right in here I was getting a real squeaky signal and I couldn't even get a VDI number on it but I've dug a bucket lister I have never found a United States half cent. And that's what that is. It's going to be really hard to make out. I don't know if I'm going to get a date. It's at least a drape bust. Could even be a Liberty cap. But you can see the design on the front. And you can see uh, United States of America. And right here by my thumbnail, 1 over 200. 
but that is a bucket lister. This house was built in, I think she said 18, lower 1800s, like maybe 1811 or 1812. This was, this was down there too. You can even see the impression where it was sitting. That is awesome. I'm so happy I dug that because, like I said, I've dug uh, some large scents. She's not focusing now. Let's see if we get her to focus again. I've dug some large scents, but I have never dug a half scent. And I just want to say thanks to Paul for inviting me over here. I feel bad because he hasn't found anything yet. Uh, I'm hoping he gets on something good, but awesome fine all right we'll get it cleaned up don't know what we're going to get off of it but at least it's identifiable so all right see you on the next all right still chugging along in the front yard um just found a few uh a few modern pennies so far but uh did just dig this relic up too bad it wasn't whole but it's a nice old crotal bell and it's half gone but that's pretty neat I haven't dug too many this big. I think maybe I've dug one that was this uh, this large and intact. But all right, we're gonna keep going. There's old stuff here, so see what happens. See you on the next. Okay, just found the crotal bell right there by the stump. Got a decent coin signal. Turns out to be a little beat up sterling silver ring. About that. Not too bad. It's beat up, but we'll take it. I didn't look for any marks on the inside. I'm sure there is like a 925 or a sterling in there. Uh, hard to tell. I'll check it during the wrap up, but all right. I'll see you on the next. All right. Moved over onto the side of the house. Um, there's a lot of property back here, I'm sure. You could spend a long time doing stuff, but just found another cool target. It's gonna be a, it's like an old button, old king's head on it. Oop, king's crown there, and it's a convex. Looks like it, looks like it could be older. We'll have to clean it up and see if we get anything on it. But all right, that's a pretty cool target. Keep going. See you on the next. All right, been a little bit. I moved back around the front. When I covered this front before, I was, I was going up and down. And as you know from some of my old videos, uh, I like to cover these yards sometimes going in different directions from what I previously did. And uh, I had a little choppy signal, but I've been digging my iffy signals, um, just trying to learn the simplex, and got a V-nickel. So, glad I stopped and did that. Um, this side's pretty, pretty crusted over. I might be able to get a date on that. I'll take it home and get it cleaned up, but you can perfectly see the V there. So I'm not gonna be here too much longer, but just wanted to recover the yard in a different direction and uh, then wrap it up. Have permission to come up here again. Uh, gonna meet up here with Paul and we're gonna try some, some houses around the area too and see what happens. But, uh, all right, see you on the next or on the wrap-up. All right, just a couple minutes after the V-nickel, got that signal and turned out to be a little flat button. Don't know if there's anything on it or not. It might be some writing on there. Shank is busted off, but it's older, so we'll take that. But still working the opposite direction of the yard. And uh, I'll be going soon, so see you on the next or the wrap. All right, still going, still finding targets. Uh, this came in as it, it was going to be a deeper signal, but turns out to be an Indian. Looks like 1907. I was wondering when I was going to find any of these here. Got to get it cleaned up, but that makes it a good hunt. But all right, still got one or two passes left. And digging these iffy signals, uh, that wasn't 
that wasn't a, a steady strong signal and it sounded deeper but like i said i'm still getting to learn this simplex um so i've been just basically digging all kinds of signals but i'm i'm glad because i'm learning the machine and uh it's definitely producing it's definitely getting me on the goods so uh can't say anything bad about it so far all right see you on the next of the wrap Okay guys, you saw the clips from the last two hunts that I did. Uh, I got out two different times and on two different properties. And the first one I'm going to talk about is those first couple of clips uh, was that uh, older farmhouse that I think there was a house from the 20s built there. Um, but I think it was an older property. Looking at some of the older maps, there was supposedly a cider mill in the back. Um back where I found the large scent. Unfortunately, I couldn't get back uh, further on the property. Uh, the homeowner only owned a, a little section of that field, and I was only able to detect in that field. I actually talked to the neighbor next door, and she politely declined me detecting the rest of that field over on her property. But I'm pretty sure that that cider mill was somewhere over on the neighbor's property a little closer to the creek that was down there but anyway uh got a few things and uh, a couple of good things so uh this you know just the uh an old door striker plate there a uh, piece of a pocket watch some miscellaneous doodads there and a busted up inside part of a zippo uh, an old zippo lighter as a matter of fact that is the outer case the Zippo parts, the guts are inside there, but looks like it got hit with the with the plow. I found this in that field too, and that field was plowed at one time. It's not plowed anymore. As far as the cool stuff, I did make a few cool finds. Um, I did get some clad in the yard. There was nothing really up in the yard. I think I got one or two wheat pennies in the yard, and that was it. Um, can't remember if one came out of the field or not, but I only found two wheat pennies. Anyway, the yard was a bust, uh, except for in the back. The cool things, this came out of the field, so I know that I was getting closer to where that uh, that cider mill was. Um, there was definitely stuff in that area. There was some little bits and pieces of metal and stuff. Some of the trash was just little pieces of copper and brass. So, But I did find this old pocket knife, and you can see it had a bone handle on it. Bone or antler. Looks like it could have been an antler handle. Um... The oldest piece that I found was this, and doesn't look like much, but that is the inside tongue to a colonial shoe buckle. Um, I've never found, I think I found a piece of a frame once before, but uh, never a whole shoe buckle, but never an inside piece either, so that was pretty cool. But as far as the coins, uh, those are the two wheat pennies. One was a 1941, and the other one was a 1951, you know, just average. But the two cool coins that came out of there was this Washington Quarter. It's a 1934 plane, so it was made in Philadelphia. And, of course, you can probably see the nice big gouge that I put on it there with the shovel. Um, I'm still getting used to that simplex and pinpointing. I'm a little bit off on yet. I'm sure I'm going to get the hang of it. But uh, the coolest coin I found there was this uh, 1848 large scent it's braided hair and not in great shape but certainly identifiable and i was able to pull the date off of it um probably a little bit hard to see under this kind of light but there's enough detail there but i was able to make the date out <clears throat> under some magnif magnification so but that was the first place a little bit less than what i expected i expected to find more coins around the house but there could have been soil added there um, it was a little bit hard to tell, but I think up top near the house, there was some topsoil added. This, uh, quarter was in the back section. Uh, there was a small yard in the back and that was in the back. I really wish I could get over there and, uh, be able to detect the rest of that field. But I stopped there once before in the past. The lady said no. Um, then just this past week, I stopped and talked to the other neighbor. He, he was the one that let me detect on his property but the lady did come out to see what i was doing and got to talk to her but 
unfortunately couldn't get the permission on it. So we'll just have to wait on that, see if anything ever changes. But all right, I am going to set up for the next place that I did, put that stuff out. That's That place was a lot more interesting. So hold on a minute and we will get right back. Okay, guys, just set up for the second place that I was at. Uh, I got to preface this by saying uh, it, it's weird how things work sometimes. Um, I was invited to this place by a gentleman named Paul, who I have taken to calling uh, Rockwall Paul, um, because he had, we had both been in the same, um, we were watching a live stream together of uh, a band that we both like and we were watching a, a live concert and he happened to notice my name uh, the of my channel and got in touch with me and it turns out that we were local and he's a um, a beginning detectorist and we ex had some emails together and found out that we were locally you know close by and we got together and he took me up to this place uh, this house was a very old house. Um, I I can't remember the exact date, but like 1811 or 12 or something like that. Um, very old, a lot of history there. And there was a lot of rock walls on the property and we still didn't even get to check them out. That's what I was supposed to go up and look at. We did find out that there's a, a barn foundation on the property, but there's some other stuff that we got to check out. But anyway, um, I decided to detect the front yard and... Um, I ended up finding uh, some some really good stuff. Uh, I feel bad for Paul because he didn't really find much, and he was the one that invited me up there. Um, but you know, you can't expect uh, when you're when you're just starting out. It's all a matter of learning your machine. So I fully intend on uh, Paul and I had talked about it. We're going to get together, do some hunts. Uh, Paul decided to purchase a uh, Nocta Macro Simplex, just like mine. Um, so I'm going to be happy to learn the machine, help him get going on it and, uh, maybe get together, do some permissions, do a little door knocking and get him started on the hobby. So, uh, it turned out to be a, a very good hunt. Um, so at any rate, there were a few different things, a lot of trash because I was digging a lot with, uh, the simplex, just trying to learn what certain signals were telling me. But as far as old things, you got an old doorknob here. Uh, old brass doorknob, part of it's falling apart. I don't know how old that would be, but this is all in the front yard. Um, just some miscellaneous pieces here, but I got this piece of a huge crotal bell. Too bad it's missing most of it, or at least half of it, but you can tell it's the older design. You can see the pedals on there. Um, this, I believe, is a squished up uh, musket ball. I don't know if it was fired and ended up flat like that or if it was pounded down looks like uh, eh, that little line in there could be from anything but I don't think it was carved but pretty sure that's a fired musket ball I found a mason jar lid uh, you know you get the zinc piece from the the old zinc caps on them and this is the milk glass insert on the old uh, ball mason jars well any mason jar really uh, this older buckle, I found a few of this design, and I, I don't know exactly how old they are. Um, you know, I'm guessing the late 1800s at least. But, um, ended up with some, some clad out in the front. A couple of dimes, copper pennies, rotten link, uh, zinc pennies, and, uh, one that got nailed by the lawnmower. A couple of miscellaneous things, but as far as the cool and historic finds... Besides the crotal bell, the musket ball, I did get two buttons. This one here has a king's crown on it. And it's a one piece and it's a concave button. Now I'm not sure how old that is. Um, I don't know if these were done on some kind of a press or a machine because you see the design there. And in the back side it kind of rolls up and crimps in. So I don't know if that was a machine made button or what, but... So, at any rate, it's probably, you know, mid-1800s at least. And then another button that is pretty much destroyed. It probably had the writing on there, like, you know, standard guild or triple guild, um, which would put it in that 1820s to 1840s range, roughly. But it's in pretty, you know, the shank is gone. It's pretty rough. But um, I did find a silver ring in the front yard. You saw a clip of that. It's pretty beat up. But 
That's a sterling silver ring. A cool little design on it. Again, don't know how old, but pretty neat. Ended up with a 1974 Luzerne County, which is the county that I'm hunting or that I'm in. Uh, Luzerne County dog tag. But as far as the old coins, ended up with seven wheat pennies. Now, all these, except for the first one, are just your average common dates. Uh, the first one, very, very hard to see, of course, because the coin isn't in great shape. But you may be able to make out that, let me get this, there we go. Right in there is the date. And it, you should be able to see 1909. So that is a first year, um, first year wheat penny, which is pretty cool. I I don't know why, but I, I found quite a few 1909s in the last two years. Uh, it's not the valuable one, the VDB or anything like that, but pretty cool. At least it's first year. And then the rest of them, I got a 1940, a 41, 46, 48. And a 51 and 52. Uh, the other old coins that I got, you saw a clip of me finding this Indian, which hard to see unless I get it, catch it the right way. But it's a 1907. Uh, let's see if I can get a good angle on it. I had to put this one in some olive oil and do a little toothpicking. It was pretty encrusted. But it is a 1907 uh, wheat, or I'm sorry, Indian head penny. I found this V nickel. Again, hard to see. I got to figure out something with the lighting on these to make them easier to see. But this is a 1910 V nickel. You should be able to see the. There it is. I think. Yep. Right in the center, you should see the V there. And it would be this way. Might be able to make out the head. Some stars around it. Not in great shape, but definitely identifiable, so that's cool. I did find one silver quarter, 1948 Washington quarter. No mint mark. And I didn't gouge this one, so that's pretty cool. But the highlight of my hunt is this. Now doesn't look very good at all um this is a united states half cent and all i did with this was brushed it off very lightly with a soft to uh, toothbrush and the detail is just flaking off of it you can make out a little bit of writing around the top you can see the partial letters for states of america would have said united states of america and on the bottom there is a one over 200. It's one two hundredth of a cent or a half cent. Now, that one two hundredth only appeared on the half cents um, on the Liberty Cap uh, ones that were the 1700s, 1794 to 1797. And then it appeared on the Drake Bust, 1800 to 1808. After that, that one over 200 isn't on the coin. So we know that it's between 1794 and 1808. When I was digging this out of the ground, when I first pulled it out and it was still wet or, or damp from the, uh, from the dirt, I was pretty positive that I was able to see the details of a Liberty cap half cent. Um, looking at it like this, you can see how much flaked away. It's not very good. Um, but I'm almost positive, I'm like 95% positive, this is a Liberty Cap half cent, first half cent I've ever dug, uh, that I was able to identify at least. So, kind of happy with that, it's a bucket lister for me. So this is either the Liberty Cap, which would make it in the 1790s, 1794 to 1797, or it's a draped bust, which would be 1800 to 1808. Either way, early colonial coin, early United States coin. Awesome. Absolutely love it. Anyway, that's the hunt. I want to take the time to thank the homeowner, uh, Mandy, who was very nice, very accommodating. Um, let us wander the property wherever we wanted. I know she's a friend of Paul's, but she didn't know me from a can of paint and allowed me to come up there and uh, 
you know, do some detecting, do some looking around, and I have a uh, an open invitation. So I just want to say thank you, Mandy. I really appreciate that. Um, we're definitely going to go back up into the area. We're going to check out some of them stone walls, uh, Paul and I, and do some more looking on the property and maybe do some door knocking in the neighborhood because there are older houses there. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know this is a little bit longer, but I appreciate you watching. Uh, stay tuned for more. I'm going to get out soon again when the weather breaks. It's been rainy here. But uh, if you liked what you saw, please hit that like button and hit the subscribe. You'll see more of this kind of finds from me. And we'll see you on the next hunt. Take care. Be safe.